Hello and be welcome to another episode of Let's Develop with Maven in Eclipse. Today we're going to talk about deployment with Maven. In the last episodes we talked about um, that in order to use the artifacts of your of any of your projects as a dependency in another project, you somehow need to get these artifacts into some Maven repository. And we talked about that Maven install is the way to get the artifacts into your local Maven repository so they can be resolved on your local machine. But really, if you want to work with other people or uh, to get them into a repository more persistently, you want to deploy your Maven artifacts into some kind of public available or internally available um, Maven repository um, so that they can be resolved, for example, by your colleagues or by build server or whatever. And Maven deploy is the way to do that. In order to configure the deployment in Maven, um, we have to do essentially three things and I'm going to walk you through these. First thing we have to configure is where Maven is supposed to actually deploy your artifacts to. And we do that by adding the distribution management section to your POM XML file. Um, in, the, in the distribution management section, we can essentially uh, configure two kinds of repositories, which is the normal repository and a snapshot repository. This is in order to separate um, development version deployment from release deployment. And since we're going to deploy our current 001 snapshot development version of uh, my game loop, I'm going to configure a snapshot repository. For a repository, there's essentially two kinds of information you need. First is to give the repository an ID, which is basically an arbitrary thing. I'm going to call it um, FTP Let's Developer Snapshots. Um, we need that for future reference to this repository. Uh, we see in a sec why. And we need to configure a URL for the repository. In this case, uh, it's the FTP address of uh, my website and it's going to go into the snapshot subfolder. Okay, so um, this is the first step we have to configure and just to show you what happens if we actually run this in that state, um, I'm going to run here uh, a deploy. Run and see what happens. Uh, Maven builds our project, runs all our tests, and then it fails uh, in the deployment phase. So the deployment plugin fails. And let's have a look at the error message. It says, uh, fail to deploy, no connector available to access this repository we just configured. Um, and then it says something about wagon repository, blah, blah, not finding the um, respective handler. So the thing is, since I'm going to deploy to an FTP, here and Maven does not out of the box know how to handle the FTP protocol, we need to configure a Maven extension. Um, I think out of the box Maven deployment supports uh, both file URLs, so you can deploy to your local file system or to uh, um, some, kind, some kind of mounted device or whatever, or you can deploy to say a Nexus that supports HTTP put uh, requests. But in order for FTP to work, we have to configure um, the FTP wagon provider. And in order to figure out how to do that, we're going to search for that. So Maven wagon FTP should be sufficient. Um, let's try the first hit. Okay, this is not how to configure is, but we see that the current version seems to be 2.8. Might be it might make sense to remember that. And this is what I was actually looking for. So we see here, distribution management like we just configured with the FTP URL. And then we see we here the extension um, that I'm just going to copy over here and add it into our build section. Paste that here, remove that needless comment. Um, we already figured out that T8 seems to be the current version. So I'm going to add that. And I'm going to rerun the deploy. Let's see what happens. Um, it's going to fail. I know that already. Um, but just to show you that this error message really can lead you the way. So what's the error now? Fail to retrieve metadata from this repository. Why 
did you fail to retrieve from the repository? You fail to retrieve because the password is not specified for my repository. Of course, um, since I'm pushing to, to FTP server, I need to con give Maven some credentials in order to authenticate towards the server. And the way you specify uh, credentials for Maven is not in the POM XML file because you're going to publish that in your possibly public uh, code repository. So it would be a security issue if you had to add passwords into this file, but you're going to configure them uh, per developer machine in the Maven settings. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way I know of to do that from within Eclipse. So we're going to do that from the console real quick. The file you're looking for is in your home uh, under .m2, home.m2, um, in a file called settings.xml file. If that file does not exist, uh, just add it. Um, okay, and to configure authentication data here, you just add a section called servers with an entry called server. And within that server, you have to state the ID of the server, which is the ID we configured here for the repository. So just copy that, paste it in here, ID. And then we have to add a username, username and the password. Um, one unpleasant thing, is that you specify the password in clear text here. So you really want to make sure that nobody gets to your settings XML file, unless you want that somebody to deploy to your servers. Um, okay. That's this. So let's get back to Eclipse and let's rerun the deployment. Again, it's building, it's running the tests. And now you see it's actually uploading stuff. It's actually even downloading stuff because it's looking for uh, existing stuff in the repository. But in the in between, you see that it's uploading snapshot versions of our char files and um, of the POM file. And if we now go to that accept site, which is maven.letsdeveloper.com, uh, we see in the snapshot folder, there's actually uh, a com folder now created. Com let's developer games. That's our um, group ID. Then there's the artifact ID game loop. And then below there's a folder for the version. We just deployed 001 snapshot and some metadata files. And within that, we actually see the jar file game loop 001 with the timestamp of the, uh, the deployment I just did. So what's going to happen, and this is specific to snapshot deployment, if I'm going to rerun this thing now, which will deploy a new snapshot version, then um, it is going to upload this snapshot in addition to the ex existing snapshot. So once it's done, uh, I can actually refresh this page and you see all the files have doubled. We have now new files with a new timestamp a little time later and actually even an increased index. Um, this is what Maven does for development releases or for development deployments, because uh, there can really be an arbitrary number of the same uh, version. Uh, so it suffixes them with a current timestamp of the deployment in order to keep them apart. And when Maven resolves dependencies against the snapshot version, it would always will always look for the newest of these uh, in the repository. Okay, I think that's the most important stuff about deployment. I hope you took something out of this episode. Hope you liked it. If so, give me a thumbs up, please. Um, if not, send me a message, drop me a comment, let me know what you think about it. And I hope to see you next time when we're going to talk about Maven release, um, which is essentially how to deploy projects with a release version, so without this snapshot suffix. See you there.